Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about a few new techniques. Uh, we're going to start with a few tips and then get into the main content. Uh, but first, as always, thank you in advance for all your support and feel free to like and subscribe and also share with your friends. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is this new awesome uh, resource monitor. Uh, you'll see it up here in the top right corner. This thing is great. It's called the Chris Tools. Um, to get to it, you basically go to your manager and install and you search for CRYS. And it's the first one here, Chris Tools. So you're going to want to install this and restart your comfy. And what it's going to do is as you're rendering, you will start to see your CPU processing power, your RAM, your video card uh, GPU, as well as your video RAM. And it's gonna show you exactly what's going on almost on a real-time basis. Now, one uh, item I've seen uh, for some systems, including my own, uh, is that if the refresh rate is too fast or too often, sometimes Comfy will crash. Uh, this has been addressed a little bit by some fixes by the developer, but what I've found also to be successful is if you go to the gear uh, to look at your settings and you scroll down, you've got these new settings right here that are for that Chris monitor. And I've changed the refresh rate from just you know 0.5 to 1.5. You could even up it a little bit more even. Uh, it's really not gonna change your experience overall, um, but that has helped quite a bit. Additionally, another really cool feature about this monitor is that as it's doing your processing, it's gonna tell you the percent complete. You can click on this status right here uh, and it's gonna show you where in the workflow the processing is happening right now. So it's great if before you had to kind of uh, search or right click and then go to the you know follow execution or go to the currently executing node, et cetera. Now it's just a one clicker, right? You just go right to your status and you can see it right away. So this is definitely, definitely a great new resource tool. You can see it even operating now uh, a little bit in the background, uh, but it is very, very helpful in, in terms of showing you exactly what's going on. And another key element that is really uh, important and is a big challenge for a lot of folks, especially in the uh, content editing industry, is the ability to do multiple processing of images. Uh, so not just simple one or two or three batch, but uh, kind of even a whole folder of uh, images and to do a mass replacement or, or an in-painting or an out-painting, etc. The technique is the same, but it's going to be uh, really easy to do in this example. And all these workflows, as always, are linked in the YouTube video description. So you can go and download those and learn more. So in this uh, example, I have my bookmarks all set up, so you'll be easy to jump through the different stages. Um, I created just small batches of uh, women in you know with different races and different poses and different environments uh, because I want to have a replacement of their shirt right they're gonna have a white shirt kind of a blouse and I'm going to replace that with a pink shirt instead now normally I would have to individually go and use clip sag or another sort of uh, masking technique uh, to be able to to do them individually but uh, you'll see there's a really great way to do it in a very automated and batch oriented fashion. So first area here, we have our normal loader and we have a, uh, you know, again, a normal single prompt. Uh, we're going to, uh, you know, run that. And I've already have done this in advance, right? I have my models all lined up here, uh, ready to go with their white shirts. And the, um, as always, I have my uh, group bypasser now. So if I go to stage two, you can see things are all bypassed right now, but I'm going to enable them. And so if I go to my uh, initial renders here, uh, you can see that I have a batch of two. So I did this a few times, right? Uh, normal sort of settings here. Uh, I'm using the latent consistency model. So LCM, so we have a low step count. And you could see some of the other videos of how we set those up uh, very, very quickly. Additionally, I added the detailed eyes, uh, Laura. Um, so that's pretty easy, right? And then finally, uh, I have here a save, right? So I save these images off. 
And as a reminder for folks uh, back on the XY grid video, way, way, way back when, uh, if you put a backslash, you can specify directories. So in my output folder here, right? So under my output folder for comfy, I've said, well, I want to automatically store them in the fashion model folder that I've created. And so I basically say, yep, to fashion model, my uh, slash, and then finally start it with FM, right? And that's helpful, obviously, for the file naming convention. So it'll say FM, and zero, 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 one, two, three, four, et cetera. Um, and I think that is going to be very helpful. So that's basically it here. I've already done that um, just so we don't have to spend time on the render. And then the next piece is then the uh, batch uh, generation. So if I go to number three here uh, of my bookmarks, um, we're gonna step through this very uh, slowly so that you can kind of see step-by-step step what I've done. Uh, first of all, uh, you're gonna need a couple extra custom nodes. Uh, first of all, the Inspire Pack. Um, if I don't think we've really focused on, on some of the other videos. However, from a loading uh, directory perspective, a loading folder perspective, this is extremely powerful. So. Uh, from the Inspire pack, you're going to create the load image list from a directory. Uh, you're going to specify the directory path automatically, right? So we said it was going to be in the fashion model uh, subfolder, right? So we've done that. We have a pathway to that. Um, if you want to just do it for only a few images first, you can uh, put a number here to max it out, as well as which number to start at. I kept it at zero, zero, so I'm just saying process the entire folder and it will it'll do that. Now you have to be careful. If you got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of images, it may complain about a memory issue if you don't have a lot of memory on your video card. Um, so play with it a little bit, um, but you should be fine for any normal sized batches. Previously uh, in a video, we were talking about the clip seg model, um, but actually we found a different model here, which is even better uh, when it comes to uh, automatically selecting areas of an image. Now, one caveat, it does take a little bit more memory. So thankfully, there are two models and they will be linked uh, that you can select from. Uh, but it is a little bit more memory that will be needed, a, a little more VRAM. Uh, however, I've worked with the lesser model here uh, and it's been totally fine and it's it's even more accurate than the ClipSeg model. Um, and you can see just in, uh, as an example, you know, a lot of the times the clip seg model was not selecting the cuffs of the shirt and some like finer details around the skin area. And uh, this new dyno model uh, is significantly closer to to getting to all those details. So um, so basically we have a few things set up here. So first we have our uh, loading of our our model. And uh, additionally, we have the SAM loader, right? It's uh, important to uh, eventually do our segmentation. So those two are the key elements. Um, the final item where you may get some error messages, uh, this device mode sometimes is either on CPU or auto. Sometimes you'll get an error message. Uh, I Once I changed it to prefer GPU, uh, it uh, went away and it was fine. So just as a, an FYI. Um, okay, so those models are loaded and it comes into the Dino SAM segmentation. So basically the model that's selecting your your information here. And I just said shirt, right? So I'm basically replacing all the shirts uh, that I can uh, from all the images. And I started with a default of threshold of 0.3. Again, you can play as always to increase or decrease a little bit if uh, you need it to be a little more aggressive in its selection. Uh, but I found this was perfect uh, right out of the, out of the bat. Uh, I grew the mask by 12 pixels. So this leads into, right, so if I take my VAE encoder, it's taking all my source images into the VAE encoder for in-painting. Uh, however, the masks, right, the masks are coming from my segmenter. So you could see it's basically saying bring in my full image into the encode within paint. However, only select the information from my segmenter. So that's gonna be really important. Um, and then you could see, right, as we're pulling into our sampler of like what we wanna replace, uh, we could, by the way, go directly from our VA encode into our sampler. However, 
what I found is many times the uh, areas that you would inc you would expect to be in painted uh, aren't. Uh, so it doesn't like get let's say the full let's say you're replacing their hair or replacing uh, some background objects. Sometimes it won't grab it all and, and elements will just kind of disappear or dissolve as it's kind of sampling or resampling. So what I found to be very effective is actually injecting a little bit of latent noise. So adding a little bit of noise here, uh, I added uh, about 40% into the masked area, which is the shirt in this case. And uh, I'm doing that first and then just taking that latent and putting it into the sampler. So I'm just adding a little bit of extra noise. That noise is kind of giving it that extra bit of ability to uh, pull out additional images from our model so that it really uh, has a very clean look. Uh, is this absolutely 100% needed? No, uh, you could actually try without first. And if you find that you're not getting the right level of selection, uh, you can definitely um, add that in. Um, in terms of our normal uh, styler, right, our normal prompting, I'm using my high styler as always. I'm not adding any special styles this time. However, I've just basically said for my masked area, professional light pink blouse, highly detailed. Pretty simple, right? Um, as always, added a few negative prompts just in case we want it to be clean. So um, that's it, right? It goes into our clip text and codes as always, which then goes to our uh, sampler as always, so nothing special there. Um, and then I ran it and then I saved, here's the key piece that's a little different. I saved the output, right, you can see here, uh, into a different folder, right? So if I look here, I have it in fashion underscore process. Obviously you can create whatever folder you want. And then I gave it the same uh, backslash FM as the prefix to that file. And so you could see in my fashion process folder, I have all my output images. And just to give you a quick back and forth, you can see if I'm flipping back and forth, it is very good, right? Very, very accurate between the two. So it's a it's a really good method uh, to be able to, to process that. Now, uh, there is one final cool thing I wanted to show related to this workflow, which is an image comparer. This image comparer is done by RG3, right? So that is one of our other custom models. So if you go into install and tarp, type in RG3, uh, this is the node. And again, these will all be linked. Um, this RG3 image compare is awesome. You basically take your image uh, that you want to start from. You take your resulting image. In this case, I just loaded them statically. But you could easily bring them in from a sampler, bring them in from multiple samplers, and it'll do it. But this is then the ability to basically drag back and forth to see the comparison. You can zoom in even to just see, look how close it is really to that comparison. So really, a really awesome sort of uh, image comparison. Okay, so next major example uh, that we're gonna be running through is an update to Canvas. Uh, as you know, Canvas is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite uh, custom nodes. And uh, there were a couple of updates that just came out very recently. Uh, one around moving layers and the other around pasting. So uh, we're going to actually do both here. Uh, as always, my loader here on the left-hand side, I just did a very basic scene, teacher pointing to a blank whiteboard chart, blah, 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 blah. Now the question is, all right, so like why would I want to uh, paste anything? Well, there may be sometimes you want to have content that you're not generating via AI um, to just quickly clip with your Windows screenshot tool or, or other tools to just kind of copy and paste something in to then re-render and make a richer uh, sort of opportunity. Or you may want to do some quick photo bashing, right? So quick layers, kind of throw something together, move them around, create a resulting image, and then render that as a full uh, final rendered image as well. So there are definitely lots of opportunities. In fact, in this case, I have a chart that I had created that I want to actually put on this whiteboard. So uh, first things first, I'm going to send this into my canvas. So I'm going to take my resulting image, I'm going to put it into my send to image tab, I'm going to run it, and it's going to pop over here. Actually, you can see how it's kind of warbled, right? The resolution's not right. So as always, we want to start with adding a layer first if it doesn't match. And when we do that, we now have the full resolution image. So that's good. So this is our starting point. 
right? And then also, we're now going to uh, put in our chart. So I have here on this other page, I have a chart that I just created, a basic Google Sheet, and I'm going to use my Windows key uh, S to grab this chart because I want to put this chart on that whiteboard. And if I quickly jump back, it's in my you know clipboard memory, and I just hit Control V, and all of a sudden we have our chart here. Now, obviously, this is not in our final position where we want it. However, with our new moving capabilities, you can see up here, transform layer, you can move it to exactly where we want. And in fact, we want to shrink it a little bit just to the spot where we want it. We're gonna move it up a little bit uh, and we'll regenerate the hands so it's not a big deal. Um, and you can see that's kind of our, our final sort of layering that we want. So if we come back here, now obviously we have our final canvas where we can then do our node template. Uh, we're going to do a final render area, right? And so this is just taking our final canvas that we've put together, right? Tier point to whiteboard chart with purple bar chart. And we can leave the rest the way it is. Okay, so we're going to do that. And we don't need these additional Loras for this guy. And uh, as always, right, we want to play with our denoise a little bit. So we can do that. Uh, oh, and also we want to say bad hands and missing hands. Why? Because as you can see, we've cut off some of the hands. So we'll want some of that regenerated. All right. So as we're regenerating here, you can see the charts coming in. Now, obviously, one of the hands is missing. So we're going to want to keep on going a little bit more with our denoise. We're going to bring it up just a little bit more. And there we go. You can see the hands are generating nicely. It's pointing to the chart. Obviously, you can add additional LoRa's or other things to help the hands uh, or the effects that you're looking for. But you can see we got what we uh, were looking for. So, uh, and then when, obviously one caveat is don't denoise too high because if you denoise too high, then the chart itself uh, will not look like your original chart. And maybe that's not the case, right? Maybe you just wanted a chart, a bar chart as a representative example and it doesn't matter what that bar chart looks like. In that case, you can keep the denoise really high. But uh, generally speaking, if you wanna keep that accuracy, I would keep the denoise pretty low and just increase the number of steps uh, so that you can kind of bake that image a little bit more and get the uh, the people want. And in fact, another option using our, our new uh, cut and paste, uh, copy and paste method uh, is to just paste some hands in, right? So have the bar chart with the low denoise and just copy and paste the hands into the canvas so that you can, when you do your final render, it will have everything nice and baked in and uh, into a final form. So hope this was helpful as always. Uh, as always, please feel free to leave comments and chat, and we will talk to you soon.